Hands-on learning allows students to apply theoretical concepts into practice, deepening their understanding of complex subjects. In this video, we showcase a low-cost balancing bicopter developed by the University of Arizona to facilitate hands-on exploration of topics such as system identification and control design, ranging from PID control to advanced methods like model predictive control, or MPC. Our focus in this video will be on the latter along with system identification. We'll walk through the process of designing and deploying a model predictive controller with a data-driven prediction model. Let's start by exploring the main components of this low-cost hardware. What you see here is essentially a propeller-driven pendulum, which we refer to as a balancing bicopter that pivots around the base stand. At each end of the beam, there is a small DC motor with a propeller mounted on its shaft. These motors generate thrust to control the pendulum's angle and keep it at the desired set point. An Arduino Nano 33 IoT board is used along with a motor driver supplying PWM voltage to drive the motors. The board also includes an integrated IMU sensor that we use to measure pendulum's angular acceleration. Power is supplied by the batteries housed in a battery holder beneath the board, making the setup fully portable. Additionally, the IoT capability of the Arduino board allows a wireless operation of the bicopter after deployment of the controller, as we'll demonstrate later in the video. Instructions for 3D printing and assembling the bicopter, along with a list of electronic components, are available in the GitHub repository by Professor Enikov. In this repo, you will also find the MATLAB code and simulating models to perform system identification and PID control design experiments with the bicopter. As mentioned earlier, our focus in this video will be on the MPC design. If you're not familiar with this control method, you can check out the former videos in this MPC series, which covers various aspects of model predictive control. In this demo, we want to control the bicopter to track desired reference angles, for which we will use a model predictive controller. Recall from previous videos that MPC requires a linear model of the system that is obtained at the operating point and known as a prediction model to forecast future system behavior. Using this prediction model, MPC solves an online optimization problem to select the best control action that drives the predicted output to the reference trajectory. The performance of the model predictive controller depends on how accurately the prediction model represents the real system, in this case the bicopter. To obtain a model that closely matches the bicopter's actual behavior, we will perform system identification experiments. Here's the workflow outlining the steps we will follow. First, we will design and conduct experiments to excite the bicopter with the designed input signals and collect the resulting system outputs. Next, we'll use this input-output data to identify a model that accurately represents the bicopter's dynamics. This identified model will serve as the prediction model for the MPC controller, which we will design using the MPC designer app. Finally, we'll deploy the designed MPC to test its tracking performance in closed-loop configuration. Throughout this workflow, we will work with and deploy two different Simulink models, an open-loop model for system identification and a closed-loop model for testing the performance of the designed MPC. Let's start with design of experiments. In this step, we collect input-output data for system identification. The accuracy of the identified model depends on the quality and richness of the measured input-output data. There are different types of input signals that we can use to excite our system, such as a step input, a sine wave, or a random binary input that switches between two levels in a random manner. The choice of input affects which frequencies are excited in the system. A step input is useful for identifying transient and steady state response, while a sine wave is characterized by a single frequency, revealing its response at that frequency only. 
However, to obtain a rich dataset that excites the bicopter across a broad range of frequencies, we will use a random binary signal in our experiment. Before we design the binary input signal, let's examine the open loop model we will use in this step. Under the bicopter subsystem, we use PWM blocks to generate PWM voltages to the motors and the IMU sensor block to measure the acceleration data from the onboard IMU sensor, which is then used to compute theta, the angle bicopter arm makes with the horizontal. The bicopter is at zero level when both motors produce equal thrust, keeping the bicopter arm horizontally balanced. Previous testing showed that the system is brought to this balanced position when we drive both motors with a value of 80 corresponding to a duty cycle of 31%. However, if one motor generates more thrust than the other, then the difference in thrust creates a torque causing the arm to rotate. To produce this tilting motion, we adjust the PWM signals sent to the motors in a complementary fashion. Starting from the level position, we increase the PWM value to one motor by the input signal U, while decreasing the PWM value to the other motor by the same amount U. The logic for this differential control is implemented here in the model. Now that we understand how the input signal U controls the bicopter's angle, we switch to this live script. Under design of experiments section, we define U as a random binary input using ID input command by specifying the signal length, type, frequency band and amplitude range. Here's the plot of the generated input signal. With previous testing, we chose an amplitude of 7, which is large enough to overcome measurement noise and excite systems dynamics, while still keeping the bicopter near its nominal operating point and avoiding actuator saturation. To send this input signal to the bicopter and measure the resulting response, we first need to deploy this open loop model to Arduino. Note that the Simulink model utilizes blocks from the Arduino hardware support packages for MATLAB and Simulink, which you can install through Add-on Explorer. You can also find links to resources for this below this video. Before resuming the MPC workflow, we will briefly step aside to address the necessary settings for establishing a wireless connection with the hardware. The deployed model communicates and exchanges data with MATLAB over Wi-Fi using a TCP IP connection. The Wi-Fi receive block in the model acts like a TCP server on Arduino listening to incoming data from MATLAB. Arduino sends back data through the Wi-Fi send block using same TCP connection, which we can then read in MATLAB. To establish this TCP connection, both the Arduino and the computer running MATLAB must be connected to the same Wi-Fi network. You can configure the settings under the Hardware tab, also accessible via Modeling Settings. Here, select the Arduino Nano 33 IoT as the hardware board and enter the Wi-Fi credentials that match the network that your host computer is connected to. Once configured, we're ready to deploy the model. While the board is connected to the computer via a USB cable, we click here to build and deploy the model. During deployment, we can monitor the progress in the Diagnostics Viewer. Once the code is deployed, the IP address assigned to Arduino is displayed. We use this IP address in our MATLAB script to create a TCP client object for wireless communication with the deployed model. We can now disconnect the USB cable. Note that during wireless operation, the board is powered by its onboard batteries. Next, we run this section of code, which sends the input signal and reads back the angle data from the bicopter. We observe how the bicopter responds to the random binary input signal. Once the experiment is completed, we can plot the input-output data. Note that we use the first half of the data for estimating a model and the second half for validation. The next step is system identification using the gathered data. To ensure we fit a good model, it's important to clean and pre-process the data so it accurately reflects the bicopter's true response, 
rather than any measurement artifacts. Pre-processing can include removing noise, outliers or offsets, and handling any missing data through data extrapolation. In our case, the measurements have already been filtered out by this low-pass filter used in the open-loop model to reduce noise, but there's an offset present. To address this, we simply remove the offset using the detrend command, as shown here. System identification is an iterative process that involves experimenting with different model structures and seeing which provides the best fit to the measured data. Common options include ARX models, transfer functions, and state space models. Here, our goal is to estimate a linear model that will approximate the bicopter behavior well, which we can then use as prediction model when designing an MPC controller. After testing different structures, we found that estimating a fifth-order discrete-time state space model provided a good fit with an accuracy of 86%. Now that we have a good model, we can proceed with control design. Let's first take a look at the closed loop model that we'll use in this step. The model incorporates an MPC controller into the open loop system we explored earlier to track a three level square wave signal. To implement a linear MPC, we use the MPC block, which takes measured theta and reference signals as inputs and computes the manipulated variable u that determines the due to cycles for the complementary PWM signals. In the MPC block dialog, we need to specify the MPC controller. To do so, let's switch to our script. It's useful to examine the open loop step response of the estimated model to help guide the initial choice of MPC parameter values. A common rule of thumb for selecting the MPC sample time is to fit 10 to 20 samples within the rise time of the open loop system response. Here, that will be a value between approximately 0.01 and 0.03 seconds. We'll use the former as previous testing resulted in better performance compared to larger sample times. Similarly, when choosing the prediction horizon, it should cover significant system dynamics and at least the time extending through the rise time. Here, we'll start with a prediction horizon of 40 steps, which we can adjust later as needed. And we set the control horizon to 2. We use the MPC command to create the controller with the specified parameters. Note that the data cycles for the PWSM signals are controlled by setting values from 0 to 255. So the complementary PWMs generated by the controller must stay within these bounds. Using MPC's constraint handling property, we specify the control input limits as shown here. Model Predictive Control Toolbox provides multiple solver options. Here, we found that an active set solver is suitable for our problem. Finally, we launched the MPC Designer app to simulate input and output responses and fine-tune and validate performance of our controller. We edit the current simulation scenario to set a step input reference of 0.3 radians, corresponding to approximately 17 degrees. The output response looks good. Using the sliders, we fine-tune the controller to further improve the response. Once we are satisfied with the results, we export the controller and specify it in the MPC block dialog. We are now ready to deploy our closed-loop model to test the designed controller on the bicopter. Note that the hardware and Wi-Fi settings of this model are set up the same way as in the open-loop model. We deploy the model while the bicopter is connected to the computer via the USB cable. The assigned IP address for the Arduino remains unchanged. In the Diagnostics Viewer, we can observe memory usage. Here, the generated code uses approximately 19% of the total flash memory of 256 kilobytes and 22% of the 33 kilobytes of SRAM. Once the code is deployed, we switch to our live script to run the experiment. Here's a plot of the generated reference signal, which we send to the bicopter by running this section of the code. Once the experiment starts, we observe that the arm is first brought to the level position. 
It is then tilted in one direction, trying to maintain this position, which is followed by a return to the level position. The same tilting motion repeats in the opposite direction. Once the experiment is over, we can view the tracking performance from the generated plot of the reference and measured angles and the control input. We observe that the bicopter closely follows the reference trajectory, indicating that the design controller is performing well. Before we conclude, it's important to address a key practical consideration. There will always be some degree of mismatch between the estimated model and the actual plant due to unmodeled dynamics or external disturbances. For example, we can add a weight to one arm of the bicopter to introduce an unmodeled disturbance to the system. As a result, the prediction model used by MPC is no longer accurate. So what would you expect to see if we rerun the experiment with this disturbance on? Surprisingly, despite the presence of model mismatch, MPC still achieves good tracking performance. This is due to the built-in Kalman filter of the MPC block, which estimates unmeasured output disturbances by modeling them as extended states. This capability enables the controller to effectively compensate for and reject such disturbances. As a result, we continue to observe good tracking performance even when additional weight is introduced. However, if we disable this built-in disturbance model by setting it to zero, then export the controller and redeploy the model, a noticeable offset appears in the output response, resulting in poor trajectory tracking. MPC with a disturbance observer is a common approach to achieve offset-free MPC, enabling successful reference tracking despite planned model mismatch or unmeasured disturbances. To wrap up, let's summarize what we've seen in this video. We demonstrated a workflow for designing, implementing, and deploying an offset-free MPC with a data-driven prediction model using the low-cost bicopter hardware. To explore the models we use in this video and more, please refer to the links below the video.